Hello and welcome back to the channel everyone and thank you for anybody who subscribed to my channel. Um, it's, it's getting there slowly. Um, I wasn't expecting uh, to win any Olympic races in the short term anyway so uh, <clears throat> anybody who's uh, also subscribed uh, unlike other um, sites I don't ask you to um, subscribe. Um, I'd rather do uh, or get people to do it of their own free will um, and their own interest rather than sort of begging. I think some people come across as they're all, they are almost begging for you to um, join their um, their little channel. Um, I mean, mine sort of will, as I've said before, it will divide in between Vespa and Lambretta anyway, mainly. Um, I'm not averse to having a look at um, the new modern twist and goes if it comes my way. It's just something that um, I'm not really interested in. I've always been interested in the more traditional uh, Vespa and Lambretta scooters. Um, I would say I'm not interested in A, Bs and Cs. I've had a D. I've never had an LD. Um, again, they're a nice looking scooter, but um, a bit like my GS, it's a bit limited to what you can do. and they are a little bit too slow I think without tuning to being on the road in this modern world so anyway we, what we're going to do today is to get this carburetor built back up again to get in the middle in fact so let me move the camera around a bit so um, it is actually visible what I'm going to do so we've got our float I've cleaned it all out there's not there's not anything in it anymore and loosely put back the air screw and the um, the tick over screw and what we were um, talking about last time before I cut off was the jets so um, let's go and check our jets so the main jet um, bring me back a little bit and down a bit because uh, I'm quite a way away from the workbench so um, I'd rather you see what I'm doing <clears throat> this comes in three parts. I have actually just given them a wipe, cleaned them up, and they were soaking, as you know, in um, in petrol. Um, in I just got a little jug, filled it with petrol, and that shows you how much dirt's come out of it. So um, it's surprising paint, etc., that comes from the inside of the petrol ta tank itself. Right, so what we've got here, the main jet itself comes in three parts. Um, the bottom bit is the jet, so that's the air, what they call the um, air jet, or for the main jet. Then you've got the atomizer, and then you've got your, your jet in the top, which for some reason seems to be very hard to pull out today. Uh, here we go. So... There's our main jet, tiny little beast on the end, which if I can read it, it should be, uh, <clears throat> let me have a look, according to here, um, one one six over a hundred, if I can read that. That's definitely not 116 over 100, not that I can see anyway. We'll start on the air screw anyway, because that's nice and easy. That's a 160, um, which is correct, 60 over 100. Then we've got the atomizer, which is a BE3, which is correct again. So that just pushes back in and I'm going to try and strike some light on here to see if I can read the main jet better never going to be able to film that one very hard to see it One one six that looks like to me. 
1.116 so that is correct that is a P200 so that again just pushes straight into the atomizer and that's our three parts of the main jet built up right I'm not bothered with that at the moment so if we look on the top of our carburetor we've got our slow runner and our main jet our main jet just goes in there and again you only tighten it um, just tight don't over go with these because they're only soft and they will bust so that's that's in just a little turn hopefully you saw that in on camera so that's our main jet in then we've got our slow running jet which is that one and there's <clears throat> if you look in sort of Haynes manuals etc they say without air hole or with air hole because there's solid types of these um, I've got a 155 over 160 now there is different types of these there's 150 and 160 depending on what your um, level of carburetor build is and what what uh, model p200 you've got let me just stick that back on there for the time being i might have to take a uh, yeah these are main jets i've got here and what's this one ah. unfortunately it's got a hole in the top of it again which is uh bit annoying so that one's got no hole in the top whereas this one has you spot the difference so in in the Haynes manual um, they just say they give you a, a setting with air mixture and without with air hole um, that's what it means if you're not sure now that's a starter jet which is a 60 which is pretty standard across the range to be honest hang on I mean, as you can't see that the camera back so I can actually see what I'm doing so that's a 60 um, I don't know if you can pick 60 up on that that's pretty like I say that's pretty standard across all of the SI carbs just a choke jet so stick that in there screw it in again so it's tight and just a tad more <clears throat> and our slow running jet with the hole in it I'm going to stick back in that goes to the back side of the main jet and these two holes here are for the air filter don't start screwing uh, jets into there you won't get very far so again that's screwed in just a tad on it that's fine and you, like I say you don't really want to damage the ends you don't want to damage the um, anything really on it so we've got our spring and we've got our slide and our throttle tube so your throttle will pull on this rod and if you look on the the top of the slide there it's got a groove in it so your spring will like lock into that so what we're looking at is spring on the bottom and through through our tube locked in position and our spring basically locking that and again I'm trying to do this cack handed but so it looks like that and it will pull against the the actual spring and then you slide that into that aperture there around the right way it can only go in one way anyway because of the, the way it's made so um, let's see if you can see that springs gonna pop off if I'm not careful uh, that was what we needed to check as well wasn't it what slide we've got in <clears throat> and the slide I've got is a uh, 8492.4 um, 849.24 which is right 8492.4 I don't know if that can be read on there or not let me get the cam the uh, light round and see if you can pick up them numbers on there 
hopefully you can just a number across there so I've got the right slide I've got the right jets according to uh, the Vespa manual workshop manual and you slide it in spring up the top and in like that and then it just screws in places it's not that fiddly to be honest so you just push it in place just check that the, the throttle body opens the slide and then just again you only want to lightly do these up and then give them a little bit of a turn You've got to remember that we've put his, uh, steel screws into soft aluminium. Right, so they're in loosely and just give them a little bit of a turn. That's it. And that, that's our sliding and working. Yeah. With these... Um, air screw etc what I tend to do is I screw it all the way in like that that's all the way in and then come out um, the best thing to do is mark it so put a little line like that in it so you know where you are and then take it out one and a half and that gives you somewhere to start and the same with this at the moment that's screwed in too far there wouldn't be any air getting through there so what I'm going to do here is screw that all the way in that's it you can if I put a light again behind that you can see there is a gap yeah see the light there so what I'm doing now is I'm going to come back one and a half and what I'm using there is the cutout so we're putting the cutout level <laughs> with the inlet you need a gasket under here so we're going to fit a new gasket these are all the carb gaskets and it's the one that looks like an Indian um, Lambretta, if you know what an Indian Lambretta looks like, that. So what that does is it goes in around the mount. Oh, I've actually got it on back to front. Only one way again. And what you've got is your petrol comes in, comes up in the middle, down in the side, in through the hole, which is, um, let's get this. got a float and we've got a little needle and a pin which are there so the, what the pin does is it stops if I blow through this air and see when I'm pressing on the pin there's no air coming in that's basically what's showing you your petrol and your floats working so what you do is on the float it's got a, do you see that cut away in there that goes in like that into the into the hole and then you've got your pin and then it goes through the middle of the float and then ram that home so it's level that's it so that's our floating mechanism yeah so if we now stick our filter back in again just give that a blow and our cover for the filter when I say little I don't mean tiny so what I'm going to do just for the meantime because I've built this up is just put it in place till I find that screw and if you remember we had the build tag on the front end that screw with the build date on it that goes on the front again just lightly um, tighten these screws up and the back one 
again lightly tighten that one up as I say you can you can use the spanner on these if you a bit happen fisted that's tight and just a tad tight and just a tad so that's our air uh, a petrol filter in in line filter it the carb doesn't just rely on that it's got the bowl here so the sediment can't come up um, you know any little metal filings etc I just need to find that screw on the top of here that's the old gasket there it is found it and again have you seen that little washer on there I've seen them without a washer on so so right we've got our filter and our cover put our cover on some have um, paper gaskets this has got a rubber gasket again um, it's a it's a middle let's turn that down a bit more it's a mid-range um, P200 so I'm expecting you know like stuff like that jet when it was a, a 155 um, not a 160 stuff like that you you know you get to expect because they're they were experimenting on and off all the time so the last part of our carburetor at the moment will be the choke and again you're making sure that the choke tube is nice and clear if you can see down there I'm trying to do things back to front again that tube yeah nice and clean and we've got our choke mechanism again make sure that's nice and clean good rubber on the end that's what seals against the jet and it just pushes in see that and then we have a another screw which I've had my hands on there it is so we've got another screw that goes in the top this one can be quite fiddly because the mechanism being sprung loaded or spring loaded should just start off nice nice and easy and again don't force any screw into any thread and you can just tighten that down what I tend to do is just push it so it's got no tension on the screw push it down and then just tighten that screw up without any load being on the screw <clears throat> and then if we turn it around just that's it hand tight and when, what I was saying when you're taking out you know to put your cable on here let me just drop this because you're a bit too high at the moment all right that's better so when when you're taking off the choke cable when I was saying you can pull this out and turn it what I meant was it should go in this so get your screwdriver on see that moving So what it does is it acts like a lever so it needs to go into that little cut out what you can do though is pull it up slightly and just turn it a bit and it will just take it'll be like the the hooks there so it's easier to hook on your uh, choke cable again that's nice and free there's plenty of um, pressure on there doing the um, return and what you can do is look into that hole there and I don't know if we can see this on camera I don't know if you can see down in there but that's the choke plunger moving up and down um, I can see it quite clearly but um, maybe I can uh, demonstrate it with uh, I've got a tiny enough screw to go in there or a screwdriver probably not at the moment but basically what you can do is put um a little poker in there and you'll when you move that you'll see it it clears um, let me see if i can move it all the way up so it looks like a black hole and then down again i can see the plunger so hopefully you can so what we've basically done is we've got one and a half turns out on the air mixture and the tick over 
is again one and a half from being closed so we've got a slight gap at the back and there's a tiny little hole there that our air screw works against um, <clears throat> like I say it's, it's hard to show you but um, that's the choke hole on the side there that hole and then you've got the the, the actual uh, oil comes up up that hole there in and it feeds in the back of the reason they fed it in the back obviously is if it's fed from the front it won't go down it probably wouldn't pull that's why the the holes in the back but that's our carburetor built up ready to rock and roll right put that somewhere safe and then we've got our air box again which is shift you over a bit here We've got our air box that we built earlier. And what you've got is two gaskets here. What you start off with is, um, right. They are all auto loop gaskets. So I was just checking what I've got here in my hand. So what you start off with is, um, that one goes that way. So that's the one below the carburetor. Yeah. So all our holes are free. So we've got the mount for the carburetor and we've got the auto lube free. Never block that hole if you're running auto lube. So if you've got a gasket without that hole, knock a hole in it or you're going to seize your, your bike up. Then you've got on the back side this one. And that goes around. like that have you noticed something on the bottom got no hole there why is that well it's because the oil's coming out the top we don't want it to come out the bottom here so what it's doing is it's sealing this oil passageway from the top of the engine case so engine case right on there and these gaskets are really good, um, really good. I'm, I'm, uh, normally you not you have to sort of open them out to match, but that is that is damn good. I'm very impressed with that. So you have a gasket basically where that bolts onto the engine and one to the carburetor itself. This one here is still an auto lube, so I think that's a 20 mil one. That's for a, a smaller um, carburetor. Doesn't fit that way, so it must fit that way. So it fits on the bottom. Um, let me have a look. That's got a. I'm not too sure with that because that's got the uh, the cutout for the oil. So. Oh, that's how it goes. Hmm. Wonder why you've uh, got all the gasket right the way up there. Weird. But again, that fits perfectly. And we've got our hole for our um, auto lube to come through. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to stick this back on the um, engine and we'll talk about putting the petrol um, tank back in and fiddling around with cables etc and doing that but we'll get this put in first remember we've got one screw that holds it in the middle that cheese head one i'm just going to give that another wipe as well before it goes in but i'll move over the camera and we'll go from there <laughs> 